here at the end of the week, the middle of November, and the beginning of a new edition of CNN 10. I'm Carl Lazuz, and Fridays are awesome. Know what's not awesome? Antibiotic resistant germs. That's our first topic today, and it's one that international health officials are very concerned about. By germs or bugs, we're talking about bacteria and fungi. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control, a government health protection agency, released a new report this week that says there are now five so-called superbugs that pose an urgent threat to humans. The last time the CDC released a report like this, there were only three germs listed in that category. The problem is that certain bacteria and fungi are getting good at surviving even when antibiotics are given for an infection. Antibiotics are one of the miracles of modern medicine. They have saved countless lives, but there's another side to them. The bacteria that live in our body, they've learned how to outwit many of our most powerful antibiotics. These drug-resistant bacteria are called superbugs. Every year, these superbugs infect more than 2 million people in the United States and kill at least 23,000. Here's how a bug becomes a superbug. When you take an antibiotic, there could be some bacteria that know how to resist that antibiotic. While those smart bacteria, they're the ones that survive your round of antibiotics and they flourish. And that's when you get a proliferation of superbugs. And the more that we as a community take antibiotics, the more chances the bacteria have to become resistant to them. So in the words of the latest CDC report, some miracle drugs no longer perform miracles. It did come with some good news. The Centers for Disease Control says the number of deaths and infections caused by germs that resist antibiotics is decreasing. It dropped 18 percent between 2013 and now. And the number of infections caught in hospitals is down. The bad news, according to the CDC, is that there are still too many germs that resist antibiotics and that they can be caught anywhere in the community. What can be done about this? The report says the answer isn't in developing more powerful antibiotics, but in using them less often. The CDC estimates that as many as one-third of the antibiotic prescriptions given in emergency rooms and doctor's offices aren't needed, but it doesn't entirely blame doctors for this. It says it can be hard for them to tell when someone has a bacterial infection, which antibiotics can be good for, or a viral one, which they're not. Medical officials also say that if you're prescribed an antibiotic, you should take all of it, even after you start feeling better, because not finishing your prescription could allow any remaining bacteria to learn how to resist antibiotics. 10 second trivia. Which planet is closest to Earth in terms of mass and size? Mars, Venus, Neptune, or Saturn? Scientists say it's Venus that's most similar in size, though its atmosphere is said to be a poisonous inferno. Okay, now that this show is off the ground, we're reporting on a new Mars lander that China has gotten off the ground. It's not headed to the red planet yet, but the lander was recently tested in a part of China that's said to have a landscape like that of Mars, with slopes and craters all around. At first, the vehicle was suspended about 230 feet above the Earth, and then it hovered in the air and slowly descended until it was just a few feet over the ground. Scientists say the point of this was to test out the lander's ability to stay in the air and avoid hitting any obstacles. Landing safely on Mars is said to be one of the most challenging parts of any mission, even though the planet's gravitational pull is only about a third of that of Earth's. China has invested billions of dollars into its space program. It's hoping to become a leading power in space, and it's planning to launch an unmanned Mars exploration mission next year. There's nothing to eat on Mars, but some people would still rather be stuck with space food than have to eat bugs. They could be a potential food source on the red planet, and they are right now on Earth. Of course, when you tell someone, we can all just eat crickets, you'll probably hear crickets. But this could be the next big thing in culinary science. Experts say that if your toast had cricket flour, your smoothie had locust powder, your eggs had caterpillar fat, and your bacon was made of mealworms, you'd be getting more iron, protein, and vitamins than the breakfast you currently want to eat. So it's time to feast on some new info concerning crispity, crunchity crickets and mealtime. For many, it's the stuff of nightmares, but keep an open mind. This could be your dinner tonight. 
In this bin, we'll have about 6,000 crickets. Joe Wise is the managing director at Monkfield. They've been growing these as live pet feed for years. Now, they're expanding, becoming the first in Britain to produce insects for human consumption at an industrial scale. You're getting a, at least a kilo plus of protein from that bin. The average steak has 25 grams of protein. That's more than 40 steaks in each of these bins. So Joe's hoping that people will look at the nutritional value instead of looking away. But there are other pluses. Emissions-wise, they're as eco-friendly as it gets. They take up very little space and they grow really, really fast. They're ready for harvest four weeks after they hatch. They're then frozen, washed thoroughly, put in a microwave, heated to boiling temperatures, killing any bacteria, and they're good to go. But still, hard to say they're mouth-watering. This is never going to look as appetizing as, say, a steak. Uh, but what we need now is some really good chefs and food scientists to get behind the product, make some really tasty dishes. That's exactly what Chef Marta Ortiz is trying to do. She's been slowly introducing insect dishes into the menu at Ella Canta, her upmarket Mexican restaurant in London. Like the guacamole nacionalista, decorated with a golden grasshopper. Even the cracking, you know, it's something so wonderful. And what do her customers think? They love it, they, they ask for more. You know, they want more, they want to try it. They say, this is magnificent, this is delicious. But try one, you will get in love with them, I'm sure. This is a bit scary. No. I'm not sure I love them just yet. A good chef can make anything taste delicious, but the big question is, with these on sale here in the UK, are people in the West ready to eat them? Never had it before. Don't intend to have it now. Probably never will have it. Well, some people say crickets, like these are the food of the future. Are they? That's lovely. No, thank you. <laughs> oh my God, it looks like a cricket as well. <laughs> Just like crisps, to be honest. Just like crisps. Not bad. Not bad? Yeah. It tastes better than it looks, that's for sure. <laughs>Or 10 out of 10 today, when things get stressful at work or school, how nice would it be just to reach down and pet your dog or cuddle your cat? That's the idea at some businesses in Japan where every day is take your pet to work day. Supporters say the office is happier, it may be more productive, in some cases having animals around is said to attract more business. Of course, you risk getting some serious side eye. And on the downside, workers often have to walk out of the office. People with allergies find working much sneezier. Disagreements can become dog fights. Conflicts can become cat fights. There's more threat of backbiting. And there are only human resources with no defined pet claws to settle rough reports and hissy fits that others find unamusing. Also, there's a whole lot more litter, y'all. Maybe this whole idea is best just left as a pet project. I'm Carl Azuz, hoping all of you have a wonderful weekend.